Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll talk about scheduling in Python using the Sketch library, or at least that's how I think it's pronounced. It's S-C-H-E-D, all right? And this is included in the standard Python library, so there's no need to download or install this separately, okay? So what exactly is scheduling? Well, normally when we execute code, it happens instantaneously, right? Immediately. But scheduling is when we move the date forward. Like instead of executing the code immediately, we schedule that code, that task to be executed at a later date. Like maybe uh, after an hour, or maybe we can schedule it periodically. So every day at a certain hour, stuff like that. That's what scheduling is, okay? And a task is generally the code that we want executed, the task that we want to be scheduled, okay? So these are just the terminologies that you should know, all right? Let's begin. The first thing that we need to do is define a task that needs to be executed, right? So we'll just define a function and call it task. And uh, over here, let's just put a print statement. I am a task to be scheduled, all right? Now we're going to create our scheduler object now using the scheduled library. Do this, okay? And this takes three parameters. The scheduler class takes three parameters. First is time.time, .time, and that's why we have this library imported over here, okay? It takes functions, basically, and we use the functions from the time library, time.time .time and time.sleep, all right? Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is schedule a task. Now that we have our scheduler object, we can begin scheduling tasks. Scheduler.inter. This is the first function that we'll take a look at. Inter can be used to give a task a delay, a fixed delay, like five seconds, all right? And then we can give it a priority. And for the sake of understanding, let's just name them, okay? Let me name the parameters like this. Priority is equal to one, action is equal to task. After a delay of five seconds, this task will be executed with a priority of one. What the priority does is that if there are two tasks that have been scheduled, then the one with the higher priority will go first. So a lower value actually means a higher priority. So one has a higher priority than five. So if these two tasks are both scheduled for the same time, which they are, both of them have a delay of five, this one will go first because it has a lower priority value, which means a higher priority. Now, one thing I should point out that this will not actually run the code. You need to do scheduler.run. So basically right now we're just entering tasks into the scheduler, okay? Saying that, okay, this is a task you need to do. But until we call this function, the tasks will not actually begin, you know, execution. So let's run this and then wait five seconds to see our output. There we go. See, after roughly five seconds, this output has been printed out to the console. Now, let's explore one more thing. Let's assume we have a function with parameters, like we need a parameter over here, like name. We'll use formatted strings over here to include this name inside the output. And down here, I'm going to specify the arguments that I want to be passed to our action. This is going to be a tuple or list, I think, are also fine. Then we'll just give it a name over here. And remember to always include an extra comma at the end of this tuple or list. Okay, otherwise there's going to be an error. So I'm going to duplicate this now. Now that we have arguments, we can differentiate between two or more scheduled tasks. So I'm just going to show you how the priority works out. I'm going to give task one a lower priority of two and task two has the priority one, which means that task two has a higher priority. Now, if I run this code and since both of them have the same delay, they're gonna, they're gonna conflict and the one with the higher priority will execute first and that's exactly what happened. Task two executed first because it had a higher priority. Now let's discuss the interabs function. The interabs function is very similar to inter, but the difference is that this function takes as a parameter, the first parameter is a fixed time, all right? Not a time delay. 
in inter, we pass in a time delay like 10 seconds later or a thousand seconds later, etc. But in inter abs, we specify a time. The first parameter here is a bit confusing. It's actually a float value that represents the time after the epoch. The epoch is a date uh, in 1970, January. And well, that's a bit complicated, but long story short, this is a float value. And let me teach you the easy way to get this float value. You can either do time.time .time and then plus five. Time.time .time returns a float value and then you can plus five into it for like five seconds later. But the only issue is that this makes it no different from the inter function. What if we want a specific time, all right, uh, on a specific day? How do we do that? Well, the easiest way that I found to do this is time, I'll just pick a different um, t is equal to, and let's import the date time library, import a date time, and then do date time. And then here you can specify a bunch of things, date time dot date time. And here we can specify the year, 2023, the month, which is February right now, then the day, which is 18, then the hour, which is one and 52. And then seconds, zero, I guess. And yeah, all right. Now I'm gonna pass this in here, okay, T. Then we can pass in a priority, one. Then the action is task. And the argument can be task one, like before, all right. Now, oh wait, sorry. You can't, you can't pass that date time in directly. You need to pass in the time stamp, okay, like this. So run this code, and if I'm not wrong, this should execute, because right now it's 51. It should execute in 52. I'll pause the video and resume it once it does. Perfect, there we go. See, my code executed. This is how you can specify a time, all right? The date time library is pretty good for, uh, you know, specifying an exact year, uh, hour, day, even down to microseconds, by the way. You can pass in a microsecond over here, okay? And yeah, then just convert it to a time object, which is a float value, basically. Uh, and then, you know, using the time step function, and then just pass in the rest of the parameters like normal, and you're good, okay? Now we're almost done here. I just want to discuss one or two other things. You can do stuff like, um, let me just revert some of this code. All right, back to this. Okay, cool. Now you can do stuff like print scheduler dot Q, which prints out the current uh, stuff in the scheduler. Okay, which are currently queued. That's something interesting. Other than this, you can also remove jobs from the scheduler, use the dot remove function. So for example, let me just change the delay. This one can be three, this one can be five. And because the prior, because the times are different, the priority doesn't matter anymore. So let's assume that whichever task runs first, or let's say that if name is equal to task one, then remove task two. Oh, and how do we do that? Well, we need to do this actually. Task one is equal to that. Task two is equal to that. And then we pass in task two over here. Okay. And, oh wait, sorry, it's cancel. All right. And likewise, we can do if name is equal to task two, then cancel task one. So whichever one executes first is gonna cancel out the other one. Now, let me just run this and only one of them will run. See, only task one executed because once it executed, it just canceled the other one and the program shut down right there. Another thing that you can do is print out this, print scheduler dot empty. It's a function. This will tell you whether the scheduler is currently empty or not. It'll return a Boolean value to represent that. So that's the end of this video. Hope you guys learned how to do scheduling in Python. We have an, another video planned out for advanced Python scheduling, where we discuss a more advanced library for our scheduling in Python. So definitely do subscribe to the channel so that you stay notified for that video.